Oh my god. Oh my god. What uh Chase, what's your costume? Fat guy. <laughs> That's what you're being right now? No, but I mean really, what is it? I can't tell what it is. Oh, I'm an angry video game nerd. <laughs> is that it? That's actually pretty <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah, but what are you? What are you dressed up Just as? Just a dude? Dude with a tood. Dude with a tood? What about you? We can't have this song going loud or else they'll SoundCloud will uh, go. Hey, yeah, you, you can't, can't put this up. That song. <sighs> Sorry. It, well, is, it, well, it is a thriller of a night, though. It's a Halloween song, isn't Ooh. it? Dude, Scary. happy fucking Halloween uh, weekend, boys. Yeah. Zeb, what is your costume? I'm a guy dressed up uh, for a wedding last night. <laughs> yeah, you look ugly. Wow, thanks. Damn. Just like on a scale of one to ten, your ugly meter, you're a fucking eleven. <clears throat> wow, coming out with the big guns. Jeez, those were good. How you incorporated Dang. math and numbers? Chase got snaps <laughs> for days. That was original. As Thanks, hell. bros. Thanks, bros. I've been really thinking a lot about this podcast, and uh, well, that's good. like what I'm gonna say, dude. I'm excited because this is our second annual Halloween episode. It's Halloween, and this is probably my favorite holiday of the year. Okay, we. Well, you know what? I want to actually talk about um, that. Okay. It, that exactly. Welcome to the Triple B Podcast. Welcome. Special welcome. Halloween pizza party edition. I am on S- cough medicine. Second annual. I'm high as a fucking draft's tits. <laughs> These guys are both loaded. <laughs> we are tripping. Different, different drugs. I feel like a caterpillar in the cocoon. Um, okay, so <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. It's it, a day. Isn't it stupid? Um, I it, mean, yeah, yeah. If you're a girl dressing okay. up and and going trick or treating, and then yeah, if you're older, then you go to these parties where you dress up and act funny. Well, if you're older, you just like fucking roofie a bitch, right? Whoa, Jesus! Why yeah. would you do that? Because well, then you get laid right? against the law. That's not how you get laid. So, isn't Halloween that's, all about surprise sex? <laughs> that's how. Oh. You, See, I I go as I'm Trump. That's though. how you I'm end up in jail, and oh. it's also how you get a backlash from a large group of feminists. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just trying. To, I'm just trying to grab. What I like, pussies what I like, Halloween. Jesus Christ, this is what you, you were just saying how you that's thought a, about this episode. That's Chase, by the way, so much. the guy saying all the inappropriate things, Chase. That, like you didn't know that. I'm just kidding. Halloween's a very bizarre, because uh, like, I mean, guys can be sluts and you're soaking girls on but Halloween. You, how come Halloween to you is sluts? I don't know. It's just really skimpy outfits, right? When you get old, that's what it is, right? <laughs> Girls, Am I wrong? Girls do tend to dress in suggestive it's all good. ways. I, I, I love it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Costumes. I'm a I'm a man. I'm built out of iron and bronze, <laughs> and I, I, I enjoy it. What I like about Halloween is just uh, the the turn to fall. It is crisp in the air and just cuddling up in the you know in a warm blanket and watching scary movies. Yeah, I had a heater candy. going today and. Uh, it's just clear. I, dude, I've been on a 21 hour grind. I'm sick, by the way, everybody. If I we sound all, nasally. We all have a little bit of a sick. cold. I think everybody in the world has a cold. In yeah, fact, what's going yeah. on right now with that whole thing? The government, man. Oh, is it chemtrails? So. <laughs> Standing <laughs> chemtrails, yeah. Chemtrails are getting us. They're trying to so, get us fluoride. So, what we're going to do world. today, in case you don't know, um, over the past week, we had listeners submit <laughs> to us. Excuse me. They're spooky stories, right? Yeah, and these are, from what I gather, these are things that they actually experienced in, you know, in their life. And that's what I wanted to hear, things that people have actually, you know, so uh, as far as I know, they are being completely honest in these stories. These are things that they've experienced that creep, the, creep them out. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm really excited. I'm going in virgin ears. Like, uh, I, have, I obviously, I'm pretty hands-off when it comes to this whole podcast uh, stuff. 
I just kind of, sh- I just, you know, I show up. Kind of let everybody else handle it. Let um, Ab and Zeb do work, but uh, we did just have pizza, so it is officially a pizza party as advertised. Yes, we did eat pizza. Sorry if you didn't have any, but that's not really our fault. Yeah, yeah. what did we go? We went. Uh, we went Domino's. Was, oh, we didn't go good. Oh, uh, we went good. Pepper, pepperoni with green pepper, mushroom, and olives. Yep. Was it was one. okay. Okay. And then the other was what? Pepperoni, Canadian bacon. Bacon. Bacon and pineapple. That does not belong on pizza. Dude, the other and night. And it was fucking dank. The other night I got a pizza that was just um, salami and two different kinds of olives. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Chase, dude, it was, Chase was so fucked mad. up, dude. Why? What, who in their fucking right mind is going to put black olives and fucking green, the big fucking mm, green ones? Kalamata olives. You guys they are... weren't Kalamatas. They were green olives. Oh. And they had seeds. And they weren't them. big. Now, one one had a seed because they're – I was a how spit, that goes. I was a spitting fool, dude. You didn't even eat any of the olives. So. <laughs> I love olives, man. I like There's to so eat my pizza, olives. not spit it. You know? <laughs> I want my carbs in, not out. You're an idiot. So we got five stories. We got five spooky stories submitted by you. The listeners. The listeners. Let me ask you guys this, though. Have you ever had, like, some scary paranormal shit happen to you? All the time, dude. Nope. You've never had any kind of weird, I've unexplainable never, experience? I've never, yes, I've never, I have. I, I just thought of I'm one. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Zach. I've never had you said you anything had happen to me where... After it was done, I went. The only, there's no way to explain that other than supernatural. But you've had weird shit where you go, hmm. It's not quite explainable, but it could be not leaky re- pipes or not, something. Not really. What I about mean, what about any like? Okay, so if not straight paranormal scary experiences, what about like uh, doing something the next day and believing you had a dream about it the night before? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely had, that. Well, I do that. that so deja vu, weird. that sort of thing that yeah. happens a lot. Uh, any out of body feeling like experience? I manifested something right through okay. thought has happened before. Uh, so you do believe that there might be a little more to this reality than just. I don't know that it means that. Okay. Okay. I, I, you know what? Color me skeptical. Okay. Oh, uh, dude, you're the biggest skeptic in the world, dude. Well, you're the biggest idiot. And the, the and then so Chase, you said anybody. a lot of scary stuff has happened to you. Oh, tons. Like what? Oh, every day. But you're scared of everything. Going to the store. <laughs> so, I mean, more scary, like, paranormal experiences that you can't explain. Yeah, I got I got one that popped straight into my What? Tell us, straight about, into my it. Tell brain. us about it then. Okay, so one time uh, I was on tour with uh, Los Chicharrones, and we were in New Mexico, right? Are you going to talk about this one? Yeah, this only one I've ever had in my life. Now, I'm not, I was with him, not a believer. Not a believer of uh, paranormal, not a believer of God, not a believer of aliens. Didn't uh, he just say tons of stuff, and now he says this is the <laughs> one thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, color me a liar. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so check this out. So um, well, You're a liar. Dude, so we're somewhere in Farmington, New Mexico. We weren't right? in Farmington, New Mexico. Okay, we were or weren't. <laughs> we weren't. We were driving through. Okay, um, and we went this through is a reservation. Already a mitigated All right, so disaster. we were somewhere yeah. in New Mexico. Okay. We're in a van. Okay, Old Prings is a firm believer in minus the bear music and and porn. Okay, you weren't listening to minus the bear. Music. Yes, I was. You're was... listening to soul coughing. Maybe some soul coughing, <laughs> but who cares? Jesus Christ. But, Dude, please tell me this story. Gets so better. I'm in the back seat. Ab and I are. I'm like, bro, look at this porn because we like to jerk off and look at porn because we. Share All right, porn. he's not getting to what happened, but then Scotty goes, "Holy shit, look to the right!" Yeah, and, and we were like, "What was to the right?" There was this light following us. Think and, about a mag light. And Scotty says, I passed by. It looked like this person holding a mag light, and then all of a sudden, it followed. And it was go. We were going like 60, 65 miles per hour. Yeah, Scotty was sheepdog. Sure enough, we all, we all turn around and look in the back, and there is like this bright light behind us. And we're like, okay, well, it's got to be a car or something, some headlights. And it keeps zooming closer to us and then further back. It's in this closer, field. Further back. There's nothing to the right. Well, and that's the thing. Field. Then the one light split into three lights, and they were off into the fields. And we were like, okay, there's no way that that's a car or motorcycles or anything because it, they're off road now. Do you remember when it Keep Shot up with us. us, yeah, and so that's what was really weird about the speed in which it would zoom up to us and then just drop back and then zoom up, bro. You can't make this shit up, okay? And so we're like freaking out and we're like, "There's got to be an explanation." There's cars coming towards us, and we go, "Okay, let's let's see when the car goes past if they like freak out or anything." They pass us, and then the lights shut off, 
and the car goes by. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the lights are back on and still chasing us. And we're like, what the fuck? And there was one car that came from behind us and we were like, oh shit. And they were speeding like crazy. Like they just saw fucking who knows Like what. a bat out of hell. Yeah. So we were like freaking out. And then finally we reached the end of the reservation and the lights just stopped there. Dude, witch doctor shit. Go. I uh, and I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna die right now, yeah, I'm smoking Ch- ciggies. Chase I'm smoking listen- ciggies. I'm watching porn and I'm listening. Jenna Hayes. And I'm what? Li- yeah, it was. And you Jenna put Hayes. on Soul Coffin. Yeah, I think it was mine. Spare, but whatever. Mine like a steel trap over there, <laughs> but, dude. Because uh, I remember specifically cracking up because Chase is just like, I don't know what's going on. I might die. I'm putting on porn, good music, and smoking ciggies. So uh, is this Chase is it, smoking like a gun? Is this what we're calling the Skinwalkers? This is what our best bet is that these were skinwalkers. They are uh, a Native American uh, cryptid or Folklore. witch doctor type, I mean, black magic type, um, shape shifting. Which, and for whatever are, reason, there was a lot of that going on in this tour. Well, and uh, so there was some other weird stuff, but this was the most crazy thing, especially the fact that once we left the reservation, it stopped right there. And old Prince, this guy who doesn't believe in shit. It's that fucking good food and fucking a good bed. Fucking uh, saw it with my own fucking two yeah. eyes. But uh, that was a good. That was one of my favorite experiences too, because there were so many witnesses. Yeah. There were so many. I other saw people it. to confirm how I would go that in was. front of the god or a judge, <laughs> the god, and say, "Lord Judge, I put my right hand upon thee, or my left on a Bible, whatever the fuck you do." And I would say, I swear to God. All right, so so Zeb is the skeptic. Chase has had like a crazy experience that he can't explain, so he understands that. Remember my uh, my uh, when I was a kid, I saw God by uh, my yeah, this. saw. I've had lots of fucking weird shit happen. To yeah, but I think it's all what's the what's scary. What would you say is like with? the most uh, the most for sure true? Okay. Crazy thing that happened to you. All right. Well, let's see. This one, I'll go ghosts, okay? okay this was a fucking ghosts. weird thing. So at this old house I used to live in, it was 100 years old up in Washington. The house was 100 years old, and I was like, that is cool, you know? Really? How old? 100 Holy years old. Shit. And so anyways, there was this din area that I made, like, my area with my computer, and I would stay up late at night and, like, uh, work on music and do all that kind of stuff. Drugs. And, <laughs> and so I was... In there at late at night, and I would start chain smoking cigarettes. I didn't really smoke inside, but in the den and stuff late at night, I would smoke cigarettes. But for some reason, like there was a point where at night I felt this urge to keep chain smoking and keep smoking. And I swear, one time I'm like fucking just feeling like, why am I smoking so much like at night in this room? And I look back into the like hallway and the fucking darkness is just darker than dark. It's just fucking pitch black. And I could swear that I see a shadow in the darkness and it was just fucking weird. And I could feel this presence of this thing and just feeling the urge to smoke. But I tried to ignore this thing, right? And I keep fucking, and this keeps happening at night and it's just like, it's creepy feeling, but I try not to think anything of it. I'm chain smoking for some reason. The one day the mail comes and it's a fucking like you need to replace this part on your uh, oxygen tank, like respirator. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Like addressed to hear this thing saying that there was a faulty device or whatever. Fucking like a week later or something, this lady shows up at the house knocking on the door and I answer it. And she's like, oh hey, and she looks all like kind of weird and messed up and stuff. And she's like, was it hey, your girl? No, when, yeah. would I, well, when I have said that, it was this lady, this older lady, and she's like, hey, um, I'm the owner of this house, actually, and I, I would appreciate if you didn't tell the realtors that I stopped by. I'm like, okay, and she's like, I just wanted to see if everything's been all right. And I'm like, yeah, everything's been fine, you know, and she's like, okay, and then, like, we're, we're talking, I'm just asking her about the history of her house, and it ends up that it was her dad's house, and he died of lung cancer, was this long-term smoker in that house, like, a few years before. Dude, maybe it was the grandpa wanting the ciggies through you. Exactly, man, that was so weird, and that was, like, one of those things where just the, like, 
the connections and the come up like there wasn't any real physical evidence or like you know and it so was this somehow this, thing. the spirit of this old man like liked the smoke oh, man. and like i could feel smoking. this like influence or you of, like the smoke. smoke he compelled, well, no, I, he compelled you to in smoke in a way more. like i felt this extra this extra thing to smoke and there was like a kind of creepiness about it was this like house. Your, uh... but then those those little coincidences of being like that is weird so, and then it just made me think more about like i've had a lot of other experiences and shit but that made me think about how like they talk about like how spirits or demons or guardian angels can influence you and yeah. can kind of have this presence Jeez. that you're not really aware Dude, of. Dude, he was like uh he was like your Jar Jar Banks or Anakin Skywalker. Like I was already smoking, but maybe smoking there kind of like he made was this compelling thing, you. Made this spirit like ooh, like kind of gave it some vibrance, you know. But I don't know. I have was, I have one one story, one yeah, quick story. Do. This is the one thing that that I guess I can say that I don't really understand what happened. Okay. Remember uh, Salmon Street oh, building? Yeah. Okay, so on the Weird on the roof of Salmon Street, there's this big hatch door that opens up. It props yeah. open. You go. We used to hang heavy. out. Hang heavy out as fuck. Super though. heavy door. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. Gotta be totally. careful. Dude. So if you've ever heard that door slam shut, it's wow. un, it's unmistakable. You know, when you yeah. hear that noise, you know exactly what happened. Especially yeah. if you spent as much time. Probably in like that. a what a thirty forty pound door. It's all yeah. If you spent wood. as much time in that building as we have. You know that sound, and right. nothing. It, it couldn't be anything else. It's up but a steep that. staircase to a, a one night door. smoke, and myself and a couple other people, some friends. We were just sitting in the main lobby area, and we were telling ghost stories. Right. We were talking about this exact stuff right here. Was it around this time of year? No, it was summer. Okay. It was a beautiful night. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we <laughs> we got up and we went downstairs in front of the building to smoke cigarettes. Right. But it's the middle of the night. It's silent in the city. Yeah. Um. We're downstairs smoking cigarettes, and we hear the door slam. Bam! Bro. And we're all like, holy shit. Like, what? It's not windy. There's no reason for right. that and door to slam It would take a shut. lot of wind to push that thing over. Exactly. So we're all like, what? Is somebody here? What's going on? Damn. Did you finish your no, smoke? No, I'm not done telling my story. I just want to know if you finished your smoke. Yes. All right. <laughs> we go back upstairs, go up to the roof, and <laughs> the fucking doors open. It didn't shut. Weird. See, and that's that's weird. Like that weird. makes me think of those instances. Yep. Um, and a thing that I think kind of explains a lot of these situations is resonant energy. Like things constantly are happening and making an energy impact, right? Yeah. Because it it's expending energy, using resources in an area. So I think that because like whatever, because of multiple possibilities or dimensions or whatever that like, or like hard, things will happen where they leave an impact. So maybe even just that slamming and having that sound all the time, like leaves an impact where it can recreate that. Like when it doesn't happen, Who knows? I don't that, know. That, that explanation is as good as any. Yeah, shit. <laughs> but, Do you guys ever like when you were kids have like reoccurring dreams? Like I, uh, I used to have these like four figures, right? One was a ghost, one was like a cool dude, one was a dinosaur, and one was a fucking alligator, right? And when I used to sleep <laughs> wait, on the floor, wait, 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 a ghost, a cool dude, a, cool dude. a, a dinosaur, dinosaur, a ghost, and uh, and an alligator, an alligator. <laughs> And the ghost used to trick me. He used to get, hey, say, come up to the top of these, your old blue stairs over here, old buddy boy. Wait, wait your and, toy would tell you. To kill yeah, me. yeah, in my dream. And I say, okay, I trust you this time. And every fucking time, that cocksucker would throw me off the stairs, dude. Damn. And, uh, what did the cool dude do? Well, he would, like, calm me down and shit <laughs> and whatnot. And, like, I would have this reoccurring dream all the time. And I still remember it. I'm 29 years old going on fucking 65. <laughs> And, uh, um, okay. Um, might as well slap some depends on me. I'm done. Like, this turkey's All right, cooked. Get back to but, the uh, story. But, anyways, the old um, bag of bones. I'm, I'm fucking giving up. Lost hope. But, yeah, dude, I used to, I'm not even, all jokes aside, this shit used to happen. And just I used tell to think me what happened. They used it to was just to throw you off the, 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 the He would trick him into going right. up there and then he would throw <laughs> you up. Yeah, he'd throw and then the cool dude never helped? <laughs> yeah, he would. He's just, it's okay, bro. You yeah. got this. Let's listen to him. Okay. So I we, think it was like, uh, but hold on, real quick, though. Go, go ahead. Did you guys ever have like, Nope. You guys have brothers and sisters, right? I had a sister. No, no, none of us do. You guys don't have brothers and sisters? And a brother. I think yeah. you guys do. I think you have a brother and a sister, and I think yeah. you have a brother and a sister, yeah. too. I think you're I right. just have a brother. So uh, That's true. When Four my first house where we grew up, we had these blue <laughs> stairs, right? Yeah. And my room was off to the right, and my brother's was to the left. Right. And uh, we'd go to bed, right? And I would always just like wait a little bit, and uh, I would always sneak down stairs to watch uh, Rescue 911 with my mom. Right, that was my show, and I thought it was so cool because, like, 
Bob was in bed, and you know. So he had, he had to go to bed, but he, then you were allowed to stay up and watch the but show. I would sneak down, yeah, and I would come down, and it was kind of like an unspoken. Yeah. So you were sneaking past your brother, but it was okay with your mom. Yeah, she was cool with it, which is maybe kind of fucked up. Now I'm All thinking right, what's about the it. story? But I think that's what triggered. <laughs> that is the story. That's, that's what, the story. Yeah, I think that triggered a lot of my like dreams watching Rescue Nine One One, like people drowning. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I could see that. Like all kinds of shit. I used to love that show. Maybe that's why I have like a real. Hankering and desire to become a far what's the word? Uh, uh, <laughs> Farmatician. Did you just gurp out <laughs> and then say farmatician? Uh, fucking uh, hold on. The fuck a paramedic. Farmatician. Paramedic. Dude. A paramedic. A that's what I'm gonna be for Halloween. Said, I just said to be a far. <laughs> it's matician. Hard. It's hard, dude. All right. Uh, so we've told our stories. Yeah. We got five stories. Ooh. Um, I'm and fucking I'll scared. Tell you right now that the five stories that we got are from Nate Lyle. What's up, Nate? Sh- what up, Flynn? What's up, Flynn? Flynn. However you say Flynn's last name, I think it's like McGoyle, Mac and Robin, McEckron. We got a story from Roger Harrison. Rog. Rog. What up, Rog? Fuck yeah! And Rog. we got two stories from Mikey Lambert. What up, Mikey? Mikey's from. Uh, Yakima. Yakima. I'm at the Central City Comic Con. What yeah. up, Mike? Uh, from the cool dude. Yakuza. Okay, okay. So here's our here's our twist. Here's our play on it. Yeah, we it's a little unique. We had people mm-hmm. that you may or may not know. Uh, some pretty cool people with some pretty cool voices read these stories yeah. for us. Yeah, a little narration. Huh. So uh, this is news to me, boys. Where should we start? Uh, I don't. Uh, you're in control, Captain yeah, Steve. You're in okay. control. I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna lay down. Let's start. I'm here. laying down. Let's start with. Uh, yeah, we're real comfy. Flynn. Look at us, guys. Flynn sent us a story. He calls the Coffin Man. The Coffin Man. All this right. is the Coffin Man, as interpreted by Honoree Osborne. Hey Zeb, shut up and don't talk during all these. Let the listeners listen. You stupid idiot. When I was 17, I worked at a retirement home in Manzanita, Oregon. One night, while sitting at the front desk, I got a call from the room. I didn't hear anything on the line, so I went to check on the resident. I knocked, and the woman inside invited me in. I asked if everything was all right, and she said yes. She'd just been having trouble sleeping because her friend in the closet was keeping her up. I was obviously confused. She told me there was a man standing in the closet with his hands folded over his heart and that he kept making her laugh at the stories about the town they grew up in. I looked over to the open closet, but no one was there. It genuinely scared me. But once she convinced me she was fine, I shut the door and let her be for the night. I told my ex's mom about it the next day. Oh, that's the coffin man, she said. I immediately got chills. She said others had told her about him before. A tall, shirtless man with his hands folded over his heart, as though in a coffin. That they believed, knew them as a child. The woman died four days later. To this day, I don't know if she actually had called the front desk or not. Huh. Uh, That's pretty interesting. I, I got two words for you. <laughs> what? Henri's a really good reader, and who and Flynn's a really good writer. Did he? So he had to type physically type that story, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly! Good fucking job, bro. So what do you think? <laughs> What do you think of Flynn's story? I thought it was great. It was I, good, man. The I, coffin man. It was so scary. I couldn't even fucking. <laughs> well, see, and my first fucking reaction was that okay, this lady is like obviously suffering from a mental illness, just seeing some weird things. She's right. gone crazy. She's delusional. But then to have the confirmation later that the other people have seen this thing. Oh, that's just uh, the coffin man, right? Dude, no big right. deal. What the fuck? It was so hard for me to pay attention because the only thing I could think of was like. This guy wrote this and then Henri fucking read it. No stutters, no fucking sorry, I got retakes. Just perfect. Well, as good as Henri is, these only get better from here, bro. So, well, 
I, that was a kind of a diss on my boy Ans. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just no, saying. Uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts favorite. on this story, though. That like, was yeah. really fucking cool. And whoever fucking put the scary sounds in and all this <laughs> shit. That just happened naturally. Dude, Matt, like, Henri's voice, he read it, and it was just like, Halloween came out of his mouth. So do you believe the story's true? I'm going to have to say... No, because I'm a fucking skeptic son of a bitch. Oh, you are? Only thing I believe in is God and love. <laughs> I definitely think that it's possible for that to have been like a, a dark entity that's kind of manipulating these people or something. Or, you know, it would be even more interesting if all these people were connected somehow and this is actually somebody they knew. In we're talking about a, a, a shirtless guy. Right, standing in the closet with, with his, his hands, hands over his chest. Over his Was he chest. like in a nursing home or something? Yeah. Okay. A retirement home. I was picking up on nursing home vibes, so I'm glad. Well, that was the first thing he said. Woo! So. I'm glad I was listening. <laughs> and I mean, that would be a place definitely where I could see an entity, <laughs> For sure. a darker entity, too, trying to cling to because you have people that are older in age and near the end of their life or something. So, Dude, I'm like. Or who I, knows? It could be a good one. It sounded like they weren't. I'm a you little know, nervous they, right It was now. making her laugh. Making her laugh. Talking, about, talking childhood. about childhood and stuff. Are we going to rate so these on a B scale? I mean, if we you can, want to. No, nah, I'm just going to say, Flynn, thanks for uh, participating. I mean, Flynn, because uh, Flynn could be lying. He could have made this yeah, story he could be, he could And I hope he is, because story. God damn it, that would suck if that was real. <laughs> we hope to God that story's yeah. not true. Well, oh, hey, my, my pops, he works at a retirement home, and, he, you know. Dude, uh, I heard your pops crazy stuff is a happening. hell of a cook, dude. <laughs> you heard that? I, dude, I follow him on Facebook. He made a fucking, uh, a fucking cast iron fucking vegan uh, apple cobbler from scratch. <laughs> Shout out to fucking Mark Sims. Mark, Mark Sims. Sims. Motherfucking Mark Sims. Mark Sims is the closest. Mark motherfucking Sims. So what the closest you... thing we have to Wim Hof. I That's know, true. dude. He Jeez. is a Mark Wim Hof. Sims. What do you, so what do you think, uh, Zeb? Are you kind of on the fence with that one? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Hey, I got something. Uh, just I was scrolling through my uh, Facebook feed when, Abba, Facebook? when Abba was talking. That's all he does is no. I was just, but I got something kind of cool, real quick. Okay, I'm just. I'm not trying to break up the monotony. Um, You're not trying to break up the monotony. <laughs> but dude, what? What? It. Phil Collins performed in the air tonight. Yeah, we saw it with the Roots like three days ago. Oh, God damn it! Fucking it. Right, and it was pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'm an asshole. So what's our oh, what's our next story? I like Should that. We just go into that the was next fun. One? Yeah, keep them coming, dude. <clears throat> Fuck yeah. These guys, how cool are these dudes' voices, dude? How cool is we know this? some cool ass people? Yeah, we do. Thank you, everybody, for doing this. Let's see here. So we did Mikey. We haven't done Mikey. Right, no, we haven't done. We, that. we have did, two. Uh, we have two Mikeys. Get it together, man. <sighs> it's hard to keep track because there's so much stuff going on. Okay, let's do one of Mikey's then. Yeah, yeah. he's got this two. This is. Uh, Mikey Lambert's Post Falls Haunting. Post Falls Haunting. Post Falls. As read by Azrael Howell. Ooh, I love that. Azrael oh. of uh, Shout out, Old Azrael. Dominion and uh, What Have May. Mm -hmm. uh, or What Say You. <laughs> what Say exactly. You. Exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, Post Falls Haunting. Here we go. Azrael Howell. Turn my headphones up. I was up. living in Post Falls, Idaho. And I was dating this girl. We went over to a friend's house and a friend was kind of kooky. She was telling us how spirits follow her. And there's a faceless man that lives in her house. There was only five people in the house plus a little dog. The lady that owned the house, her son, my girlfriend, myself and her two-year-old daughter. Dog got you. <laughs> her son got in the shower. And as my girlfriend and her friend were chatting about whatever... I was playing fetch with her dog. The dog had taken the toy behind my chair and came back in front of me like it was waiting for me to throw it. All of a sudden, the toy flew from behind my shoulder and landed near the dog. No one was behind me. Everyone was in front of me and her son in the shower. Freaked me the hell out. About 30 minutes later, we decided to leave and her daughter was walking towards the door in front of us when she stopped in the middle of the walkway like she hit an invisible wall. She fell on her butt and started crying and saying, Guy, her mom told me that the spirit was trying to keep us from leaving. I ran out of that damn house and never returned. Scary shit. <laughs> Dang, man. 
<laughs> yes. If that guy would say dog, ass, and butt a thousand times in a row, a I could just dog. listen to that fucker the all way, day. The dog. dog. A little dog. A little dog. Dude, that is some crazy shit, though. That was tight. Especially that the lady is like, man, and people that live in haunted houses or, or have like poltergeist problems or stuff, like, I feel bad because it is almost like, from, I've seen some people where it's almost like a Stockholm syndrome type thing. Yeah. Where like it scares them at first, but if they're not able to just get out of there after a while, it just like, yeah. they just get accustomed to it. Yeah, I'm surprised David Mann didn't write in. He's got a bunch. He's a superstitious guy. He believes in this shit. You know what I mean? So wait, so you don't believe that story? Uh, No. What do you think happened? I believe in... uh, What do you think happened happened in that story? How can you explain that? So a toy flew over his damn shoulder, (laughs) and a girl fell on her darn butt. Right. (laughs) Well, maybe the girl was a weeble wobbler, and she all fell down. You know, problem solved. The thing, I, the thing, I don't know. The thing about that story to me is there's too many variables. How old was the girl, for one? There's too many people. If she was under three, she might have had those wacky arms. Bec- you know, like diabetes but arms this, on a this, grown man? Th- when they came in, the lady like kind of told them that this place is gone. There's weird stuff happening she's, here. She was kind of kooky. Right. She was kind of kooky, but that's because she's living in a place that has a fucking spirit in it. There's like just a, there's a too malevol- much. Or, uh, so there's a guy and a spirit. girl and a boy and a, and a thing and a dog, and there that's too much stuff. All right. To just slide it like who and who knows? Right. Right. Okay. You know, like any, like one boy's in the shower, one guy's the girls are talking <laughs> about whatever. <laughs> That's my right. favorite part, talking about whatever. <laughs> so it's the variables that's got you. So it's like he could have just been he'd been sitting there and somebody threw it that he didn't well, notice. Yeah, and then the kid the kid stops as if they hit a wall, and then the kid says, guy, like that's... Well, maybe it was like my God experience. God, you know? What well, I, right, maybe, so, or... Uh, you know what? I believe this story. Okay. Chase is a believer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Because it might be like your God. What do you think, Abs? <laughs> Me? Um, I mean, I think that it's weird shit. I think that uh, it was probably a house with paranormal activity. And, and then that's what weirded me out about was that how this lady is comfortable with it and stuff. And some people, they are. And they don't take any steps to clean the house or anything. They just, like I said, it's almost like, like, white sto- it's almost like Stockholm Syndrome where they, they come bullshit. to like it. They come to depend on this crazy shit happening. My yeah. honest opinion is bullshit because I don't believe in this shit. Because... Uh, they people like to say that kind of shit get you off your game a little bit get you a little nervous say you're playing a little ps4 in your boxes by yourself you're gonna order pizza and all of a sudden ooh, what was that in the corner who likes to do that yeah what the fuck are you talking about i'm just talking about me (laughs) you you like to imagine you see things you don't see well it was if somebody was like yo this place is haunted and then later on i'm sitting there and i'm thinking about that it's in my brain so you think people do that just strictly to scare yeah or lore or like the house just got passed on with these things and it's just kind of like you know but then how do you maybe it's like religion but how do you explain stuff that happens then yeah I mean, shit happens. Old houses, fucking pipes, fucking you know, creaking crickets, and fucking. You <laughs> we know. got we got more about old houses. There's things, and old houses are scary. Don't get me wrong, dude. I've sat in bed in the middle of the night, going, "Holy fuck!" Like this isn't right. So you don't you don't think I used to crawl in bed with my mom and dad. I used to sleep on their floor. I was such a scared little baby. See, okay. And I uh, still am. This is my argument for these things, is that our reality and everything we see is made up of fucking, like, chemicals, gases, and frequencies and right? shit, right? Yep. True, and true, so true, true. there's, true. like, Knowledge, just science. when it comes to light, think of the spectrum of light that we see versus the spectrum of light that exists. Can't, can't, can't process see it. it. We can't see all the colors and stuff. Nope. So, like, what makes There's not us enough think, eyes in the world. So, what makes us think that we're seeing all of reality or what's <sighs> actually here? We're not. Like, we're just these weird things we're interpreting but I other am an, things. I am a fucking ignorant handle. fucking white American, bro. And I, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. <laughs> Next, Next story. Story. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Um, you know what? Let's do Mikey's other one. All right. We're going Mikey back to back? Yeah. Mikey, you're, get, you're getting a fucking daily double right now, brother. This is <laughs> what I have titled. Man, I just got jacked up. I was on that fucking caveman coffee. Shut up. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Will you shut up? <laughs> All right. What's yes. this one called? Yes, I'm shutting up. I'm sorry. This I'm is a... Uh, 
this is man, Mikey's man on fire. Let me hit that. Well, I'll no. try that. No. Let me try that. I'm sick. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm focusing. I'm sorry. Mikey Lambert, Jesus man on Christ. fire. As interpreted by Hedy Leon. Ooh. Word. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so the date is 10 31, 1987. Subject is one That's when I was Mikey born. Lambert. Subject has shown no propensity for hallucination or other neuroepisodic condition. Uh, Ms. Lambert, if you could uh, just explain to me exactly what it is you think you saw that night. When I was little, I lived in an apartment in Yakima, Washington. And our closet had our toy chest in it. And my brother and I and our neighbor were playing in my room and I crawled up inside the closet and there was a spot where you can put like stuff on top, like blankets and stuff, and you can overlook the room. Well, I was going up there for some reason and I peeked over and in the corner of my eye, I swear to God, out of my door and into the hallway, I could see a man on fire walking through my hallway. Fuck you! It's the only time it ever happened, but I cried my fucking eyes out. Yeah, I would too. Girl, I feel ya. Hugs. Hugs. Like so. Come on. So that's a crazy one. Jeez, play that one again. <laughs> I'm not playing it again. <laughs> so this is coming from the perspective of a kid. Right. Climbing up in a closet. Looks over and he sees this fucking man on fire walking through the hallway and is like, holy shit. And it scares the shit out. Scares the shit out of this kid. So much so that he's crying. Cries himself to sleep. Yeah. I mean, fuck, man. I would, too. I've been there. And uh, and that's what I'm saying of these, like, energy impressions. Like, at this spot, at some point, there could have been a fucking battle and a man on fire was walking through. And now this, like, little glimpse of that time just kind of creeps through in reality every once in a while. It's fucking insane. Who knows? I think you're on the marijuana. <laughs> yeah, that really makes it... <laughs> Makes you crazy. You think, that, uh, you think that kid was smoking marijuana? Kid I, think was he, high as fuck. I think he accidentally got an old Papa's special brownies. But no, seeing this, so he was a kid when he sees this fucking crazy thing. You were a kid when you saw Jesus. Kids are just idiots. Though. No, I think I don't think that it's that kids are idiots because kids are fucking brilliant, man. They just got little, little and I think brands. that you're close that at that time. You're closer to this. Uh, this other realm where you came from, where consciousness comes from and shit. And then you might be able to peer into You're that. You're more open to while. believe the unbelievable because right. you haven't been... Whereas, like, yeah, not like to. you have all these memories and impressions, and now you're a fucking diehard American that doesn't believe what he can't see. Yeah, I'm when you're die a kid, diabetes. when you're a kid, you're not as ignorant that way. You know, you're just like, yeah, anything could be possible. But you're you just also, a big sponge. But you also have a very active imagination. Yeah, you do. True. So Especially you, you. You won't even believe some of the shit that was going on in my brain when I was a kid. Uh, Holy. You could try us. Holy macaroni. But does the imagination cause actual visual hallucinations? For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I, anytime, you imagine things and you hallucinate. Anytime oh, I yeah. ever thought I saw something. Yeah. Even you know my whole life. Once it was over and done. Nine time, 99 times out of 100, I went, okay, that wasn't really what I thought it was. There, okay. That's explainable. That was a, a trick, a mind trick. And a, you know what I mean? Right, which the mind can play crazy tricks on you. Especially if it's something out of the corner of your eye. Oh, yeah. A I've movement. Some weird shit out of the corner of my eye. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. The, uh, uh, I'd love to give you guys a glimpse of my I would brain. Not, no, sometime. no. I actually... I would jerk off to your brain, probably. Yeah, it's like it's like the, the cell with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Dude, I want to get back to these stories, but uh, I want to take a little break from them. I just want to okay know, you can yeah. you say who read that one again? Because that was that was Hedy Leon. Hedy Leon. He- Sorry, Hedy Leon. I don't know you, but with a with a little introduction by a special guest, Doctor Zachary McDebbin. McDebbins. And I th- thanks Zach. I think that guy's real name might be Zach. Yes, Dr. Zachary McDebbin. Maybe a ranger in there. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. Um, did you guys Ooh. watch The Walking Dead? 
Yes, the premiere. No, but I didn't need to because you explained it to me to a T. No spoilers, though. Let's just make that clear. We're not going to spoil anything. I just want right? to speak for Zeb. He's not a fan of The Walking Dead anymore. You over it? Gone too no, far. No, that's not Gone it. Too that far. that uh, that episode was too no spoilers. Much. That was too much for me. Yeah, you were saying that. Uh, yeah, like, and it, it's weird. I've seen a split crowd. I have seen a lot of people say that that was like. I mean, was it too too much for you emotionally, visually, gore? Or uh, yeah, you know, I'm not. I don't consider myself squeamish with mm-hmm. make believe violence. Like I can usually, I you know, I get it. It's fake. Right. My brain doesn't. It doesn't go there. Well, it fucking went there. Yeah, with that one on Sunday night. Okay, and <laughs> it was too much. Well, actually, it was, well, I that watched fucking it. Fucking went there. I watched it the next morning. Man, I think maybe watching it in the morning was different too. Right. Like I just kind of had woke up and I was like, oh, well, let me watch. The and then it just kind of left an impression on the rest of your day. It basically. ruined my day. Right, right. I wanted to turn the episode off. I was like, oh, I was like, ooh. Yeah. And not because of who. Right. Necessarily, but how. I mean, I can definitely, I understand your your perspective now, knowing that you watched it first thing of the day. Yeah, that would have fucked me up. I would have been like, ah, God damn it, why am I starting my day like this? Uh, you uh, know, you know how uh, they do the the, talk, the uh, Talking Dead show afterwards. Yeah, and about two thirds or three quarters of the way through, it always goes to Chris Hardwick doing a little promo. Hey, stay tuned after the show. We're Talking right. Dead, and blah, blah. he looked like he was sick. <laughs> Did you notice? Um, I didn't watch it on the on that. So, so it was him, and there was like two hundred people behind him. They were all watching the show together, and they're just like. And he uh, looked like he was like, uh It's interesting, and I, I mean, they went the route that they had to. I think that I didn't find it too fucked up and gory, but I have been watching horror movies every night. Because you're and a so fucking, fucking freak. But, so I didn't see it too, as very gory. And then I saw, like, it's not going to happen again. People are outraged about the gore, saying that it was too much. The second, it was the second one. <laughs> see, and the first one was, I mean, yeah, it was like, Gah, but it, whatever, it happened. Right, but the, the second, second one, thing that happened. <laughs> which I think it was just because it caught people off guard. I mean, you know, was, when you when you really look at the image, like, yeah, it looks pretty crazy. It was too real. Right. right. And it was too... I thought it was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was really well, I mean, crazy well done. Yeah, yeah. But holy shit. It was a lot. And I'm glad they went the route they did. You know, if they didn't go that way, there would have been a lot of people pissed off. I think even more so than there are people pissed now. Um, and yeah, I mean... Uh, it's it's I'm still in the loop. I'm like, all right. I think it kind of fucking it kept it made it exciting for me to keep watching. Yeah, I yeah. I saw like uh, shout out to Carl. Um, he was like, thanks Walking Dead for ruining my day or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty much how I felt. See, so I don't I dude honestly I I've watched The Walking Dead a lot and I just fell off in the last couple seasons. You've said that every time we talk, which about sucks because I really do like that show. I'm just gonna watch it all. Um, I didn't know I I watched that episode because I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna pull Zeb and who cares what I He made start. me tell him what happened. Yeah, I wanted to know. He was like, No, he's like, I don't give a shit. Tell me like, what happened. Who's this fucking guy? You know? Negan. Well yeah. Well, no spoilers. That's not That's a spoiler. Not a spoiler. <laughs> so you can say names, but you can't say what Negan does. Pretty much. Pretty much. And you can't say what he does or what he does it to, no, who he does but, it to. But, ne- but Negan is just part of the, the storyline. He's, mean, the, he's kind of the new focus. But this is what new, Zeb yeah. told me. This is what blew my mind. He goes, what? he goes, don't drop a spoiler. He goes, Negan, he's not in it in the last episodes. You don't know him. No, they just kind of, they we knew new, about him. He's a new character. In the last episode. So he's, but we knew about him, about his organization. Was there like a, a lore? Well, no, because there's this there's this Was group there like a of Negan people. Rumors? There's this group of people called the Saviors, okay. and they are basically almost like a gang would do in going to stores and saying, "Hey, you got to give me this money for protection or whatever." I get so it. So they find settlements and they basically have they terrorize them and have the people gather supplies and stuff or grow food so they, and then say, give them. Say a if portion. there's like a nice like six seven people and they've been living there for three four months, they got a little system down. Here comes Negan. And Give me all your money, like, and I'm going to fuck your bitches. And I'm gonna but fuck part your... of it, but part of it for protection is kind of their deal or whatever, or that they won't just kill your, them I'm because they're your powerful beans, people. I'm your baked beans. And we have to remember that in this, 
in this world, like that's just how it is. You of fucking course. it's everybody against everybody. Of course. And in this situation, fucking like in my opinion, Rick and his crew are the bad guys. They kind of are. Really? Yeah, because they fucking went into the savior camp. No spoilers. They fucking te- they did a bunch of shit that goes, hey, like you guys, the outcome that happens, that what Negan does, they are lucky that that's all they, they did. To to me, they were the good guys until they started crossing certain lines. Okay, right. so tell me this. The spy, disciple of the children, or whatever the fuck you're calling it. <laughs> the um, Is this that colony that was like after, let's say, a prison? <laughs> He's trying so hard to not I'm look. Not trying look, to... look, 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 look. No, it is. Remember, not. there's like a there's there's this like almost like a pastor type feller, and there's like they meet these guys, and there's kind of the guy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying not to fucking well, spoil no, it. No, but it's, there's like a, it's not what they you're have thinking. like tires stacked and walls and shit. It's not what it's you're not, thinking. Okay, yeah. so it's beyond that. Yes. So there's more people alive besides listen, those people. Yes. If okay. you listen to our to this podcast and you don't want to be spoiled about The Walking Dead, shut it off. Um, watch that. Watch the show. Yeah. Watch okay. at least the well, first I, one. I'm not going to say any more. N- and maybe next week we can be a little more specific about. Yeah, sure. What I happened. just, I just like, I know that most people are watching it now, but I just still feel. And weird I mean, about. if you totally, if you even have this thing called a smartphone, you know what happened. Right. It was all over. Yeah. There's no way around it. But I also think that, like, because people were complaining about getting spoilers on Facebook and stuff, but I think it was a good enough episode visually and what how they did it to uh, to keep your attention and still make you feel good, even if you kind of know the outcome. Because like, I, I swear to God, I felt like I was watching an episode of The Bachelor where they kept going, and the person that got cut from the island is yeah, exactly because, commercial. Totally. Because the last season, I know I didn't watch it, but I know it went to black. I heard that a lot. <laughs> I know you yes. already said that. Okay, last time. and I don't want to spoil it, but it, like it goes to black, and, but you don't know who's gonna go to black. Is that is that how it goes? <laughs> you, we don't need to fucking try. Do you and think people don't. want to listen to you, you explaining a show that you didn't watch? I don't know. No, they don't. So <laughs> stop. Let's listen to another story. <laughs> I mean, everybody can fuck off. That's true. <laughs> You know, I want to hear another. Should we go story. to another story? It's goddamn All Halloween right. weekend. We have, we have, I'm having a time. We have two left. Do we want to go more lighthearted or more serious? We have two left. Yeah, we're going lighthearted, super serious. So lighthearted first, lighthearted, and then serious. Are you going to just say farted every time? Is that like that? You're just, you're sticking with that? Light fart, light farted. <laughs> Oh, so funny. Well, okay. So, oh, so funny. If we're going to go lighthearted, Crack myself up. you guys are going to really like this. And uh, this is Roger's story. All right, Rog. Rog. It's your turn. Roger's story, which I have called the old timey troll demon. Old timey. Whoa, he has a bag of bones. Cryptids, this man. Is, this is Roger's old timey troll demon as interpreted by the great Aesop Rock. Word. What? What? So when I was 17, I woke up in the middle of the night and was thirsty. So I went downstairs of my house and drank some milk. After I put the milk away and turned around to go back to bed, across the hall was this old tiny troll-looking demon thing. I hurried back upstairs and thought, WTF, I did not just see that. While I was laying down in bed, I had a feeling someone was watching me, so I rolled over and opened my eyes, and that motherfucker was right in my face, just staring at me! I was so scared. I was frozen, speechless. I didn't know what to do, so I closed my eyes, telling myself it wasn't real, till I fell asleep. I'll never forget that shit. Uh, that's lighthearted? <laughs> that was fucking awesome! So, Jay, so... Uh, Roger, you the man, Are you going to tell Roger? Fuck that motherfucker, dude. Are you going to tell Roger? He dropped a hard F. He dropped a WTF and a hard F. Sure. Fucking Roger's my favorite fucking our fan of our podcast, period. All you guys, fucking Roger's number one. Roger, Roger, <laughs> Roger, Roger. Sorry. Oh, that, Jesus. That just got so, me. So you like Roger's story. That was my favorite but one. But you don't believe him? Nah. What do you think? Uh, what do you try, think? Old timey troll. What do you think explains that? Oh, because it's an old timey troll. Those aren't real. No. An old timey demon troll. I don't believe in a gnome looking thing. They belong in the front yard. 
<laughs> Don't fucking look at me. <laughs> Do not. Um, okay, so I, explain that then. Explain. Okay. He's 17. He's not a fucking kid. Not a he's kid. Not- I, uh, he sees this. I thing. see Roger as maybe a kid who oh, maybe ate some magic mushrooms when he was in high school. Well, don't maybe, you think maybe, he would have said that I was high on mushrooms? Maybe, maybe May- not. Maybe he played a little too much Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he liked a little pot brownie before bed. But got up is, and had a hankering for a cookie. If and he milk. all right, Roger. If you were high when this happened, which it doesn't sound like you were because you, it was in the middle of the night. And you shit, went to get some you milk. Getting the milk. Because it was in, in the there. middle of the night. I'm always high in the middle of the night your logic is fucking back no, okay then roger let us know if you were high because he wasn't high anytime that i've had a paranormal experience and i've been high either when i say that i let them know hey i was on some acid when this happened <laughs> or i just don't it's include a, that it's a in pretty my big caveat to the story yeah, yeah. so and I, so if you there's no drugs involved it's like dude i saw it? if you if you start your story dude i watched the forest burn down and they're like, seriously? For real? I was like, yes. Well, I mean, I was really high on acid. <laughs> then, uh, yeah. But right. I believe that's what happened. Yeah, then you're like, wait, no. Shit. No. So, uh, let me, so say let no me put drugs. myself. Okay, let me put myself in the... Uh, Get milk. You see this mm. fucking weird old-timey troll What kind thing. of milk are we talking? One? Two? Skim? Whole? I'm, guess, I'm guessing 2%. Yeah. I'm guessing Raj is Classic. a 2%. Two, a like the blue lid, right? You know, my first, my first memory of Roger, I knew Roger as a kid because he was friends. He lived in my neighborhood. He was friends with my brother. Right. Do you remember the video game where the tagline in the commercials was, he's one tough cream puff? <laughs> no. What was it Kirby? <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, man. Was it for like Game Boy? Yeah, yeah, I th- it might have been Game Boy. He's yeah. One tough dream. I played the fuck so out wait, of Kirby. That's your, so, that yes. I remember you, Roger. Roger. He was just a little dude. Uh, I remember him and a couple of friends walking it. I remember Roger going... He's one tough cream puff. <laughs> was he talking about you? No, he was well, talking about the video game. So my explanation to Raj is that, number one, I believe you. I think that you woke up in the middle of the night. Your brain was still kind of in the theta and be- in between theta and beta brain waves. So you were kind of seeing some shit that's there in the astral plane. And fucking, it's terrifying. Jesus, dropping knowledge. But it's terrifying, but it's like, you know, that's just our interpretation I of it I think he still. might have been realm sleep. He woke up a little fuzzy. A little fuzzy. I'm trying to about try, REM. I'm trying to I'm trying to hang well, with no, and that's old the science pants. And over that's here. the realm sleep. And that's the explanation of it is that cause like I've suffered from uh night terrors and fucking uh sleep paralysis since I was a little kid. And it's fucking terrifying because you wake up but your brain is still fucking projecting your what you would see in your dreams basically right. yeah, but it's but crazy. it's there and it's fucking that's like in the my that's opinion, like real life vr it's not shit. hallucinating it's not fucking it's scary as shit you're like you're in between reality and your dream state and so to who's to say what is real in that scenario dude i had this roommate once um, he was like this new guy. He just moved into the room next door to mine, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, he just goes, rah! Rah! <laughs> and I've never been so fucking scared in my life. And I wake up the next day, and he comes out. He's brushed his teeth. Like nothing like happened. Nothing happened. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude. And like, I guess he has night. He had night terrors, and he would just scream bloody murder yeah. in the middle of the night, dude. Joey, my brother Joey what used to used to scare fuck? me. He'd wake up. He'd wake up in the middle of the night yelling from a dream or whoa or whatever. And it's it, doesn't it, it scares the shit out of you? It is intense. I've never well, been dude, so that scared. They're, that in my they're life. afraid, and you're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, dude. I, I couldn't imagine. I went mute. I, mean, I went quiet. Laid in my bed, eyes open, palms just fucking squeezed right, and I just I didn't move for fucking. <laughs> Three four hours just freak, even even people just out. talking in their sleep scares Ooh. me. I get scared when people talk in their you know sleep. Those because the thing is, dude, fucking dreams and sleep are still a fucking mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Scientists still have just like no ocean. idea just what's like really happening there. Yeah. Like, think about if you had to explain this to like so, to like a fucking alien species that doesn't sleep or doesn't dream, and and you're like, yeah, fucking every night I have to like lay down and and make pretend that I'm unconscious I, like, until sh- I'm I unconscious. Shut down. And then fucking my mind projects these weird things, but I think it's reality, and there's no time limit. My brain just tells really a, th- long a th- 
thousand stories. It's fucking weird. Sometimes man. I remember him when I wake sometimes, up. Sometimes, like, if I, I smoke a lot of pot, I don't do it. But if I get off the pot, I fucking have crazy ones. It's yeah, like, and it's just like, it's, nuts. to me, it's uh, I'm fascinated with that shit, especially having had fucking sleep paralysis and all this weird shit, because it used to scare the shit out of me, man. And I had this method where when it started happening, I would, like, fucking move my shoulder. And if I could move my shoulder, it would move me enough to where I could fully wake okay. up. Okay. And so it was this thing when I realized it was happening because there would be this huge buzz and I'd be like, oh, like a buzz fuck, this is happening because it's basically like you wake up, but you're like still in a dream state and you're like out of your body. Like I've had experiences where I was watching myself sleep and there was crazy shit happening. I did but that so once when fucking, I was robo tripping. So I would fucking wake myself up because I hear this buzzing. But then when I started looking more into it, I heard about how like the buzzing is actually like that is your astral self like kind of in, in a out of body experience it's kind of like you're leaving your body or whatever and so i and then it scared the fuck out of me because everybody said you got to go with that like when you feel that buzz and that frequency shift don't like freak DMT. out don't yeah like don't freak out just go with it so i would it would happen and i'd try so hard to like don't freak out don't wake up but it would get so fucking scary no. like the time no. i've I've only gone with it nope. maybe like three times. I like to just and it sleep. Was fucking crazy. I like to be warm and comfortable. And if I gotta wake up, I'm taking a piss. I'm going right back to good old Blackland. <laughs> yeah. Blackland. Uh, Blackland. I'm, I'm like the end of fucking fucking uh, goddamn Walking Dead, dude. When I sleep, you don't know what happened. Cliffhanger. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's the same because, dude. Anyway. Speaking of fucking sleeping, boys. Old Prings got on one last night. He'd been drinking this crazy fucking coffee. Yeah, I tried it earlier. Dude, washed all my bedding last night. Played Diablo so for like 20 hours. you're tweaking on coffee crack? Oh, dude. Dude, you've been playing Diablo, dude. I've been playing the fucking The Nations game at the moment. Oh, so have I, brother. Fucking Battlefield it's 1, season man. Eight hey, well, let's talk about these games. Uh, but real quick, first, yeah, yeah. I want to mention November 27th at the Hawthorne Theater. Mm. Dark Tranquility with Von Doom. With Von Doom. Ooh. We are going to be giving away two tickets to that show. Um, I think probably by next episode we'll have a good plan as to exactly how we're going to give these tickets away. It's going to be something to do with milk or pizza. So keep your ears and that's taste probably buds. Not true. Yeah, but that's, that's November 27th sense. at the Hawthorne Theater. Dark Tranquility, Von Doom, and others. Yeah. Other bands that I don't. Remember at the moment, and I don't know. <laughs> what Have you guys ever tried to drink anyway? a fucking a gallon of milk? No, it's not humanly possible. I know it's really not. It's not. You couldn't fucking chug a gallon of water either. You'd probably die. You can die. Have you heard about that lady who was like in one of those contests? You drink all this water, you fucking win a truck. She died. <laughs> what a dangus. Well, fucking <laughs> drink <laughs> all, <laughs> drink all this water, you'll win a truck. I swear to God, dude. What a dangus. He's a, what a there's, dangus. There's these fucking competitions. Oh, like, yeah. People do. Like there was that guy that fucking ate shit. like fucking 30 cockroaches or whatever uh, and then died because it was You know, fucking... you can't like it's the same with like saltine crackers. Like, <laughs> What are you guys talking you about right now? You can't. Well, yeah, anything will kill you if you fucking stuff yourself with it until your insides explode. <laughs> Die. These are real things. Dude, I'm going Butterfingers tonight. What are you guys going for your camera? Yeah, but tell candy? me about. Uh, I'm going Battlefield. One. Yeah, tell ah. me about Battlefield. Dude, well, I was gonna, it released last week, and I put off good getting it. Of but course. the whole squad that I've been playing Elder Scrolls with, they're on it. So I was like, I got some buddies. All right, let's do this. Um, and it's fucking great, man. Like, I played the beta when it was out, and fucking, I have never played a Battlefield game before. So I didn't quite get it, and I was just like, fuck, I'm dying a lot, and I suck at this. But... Now that I've been that I've you know fucking gone on this run, I'm like okay, I get it now. And the story mode, like a lot of people have said, they don't like the uh, uh, the other Battlefield story campaign modes, but um, this one is pretty good. Like it's all fucking war stories, and you're like hopping from people, and like the intro of this game is so sick. It's just like it's like being in Saving Private Ryan, basically. Tight. And there's no problem with dying. It's like you're gonna die because you are like literally the front lines of battle, like Damn. in this crazy war. So yeah, you're gonna fucking die, what and war? then you shoot to one somebody else. World War One. That's why it's Battlefield One. Um, oh. But it's fucking great, man. Like Indeed, I was man. on a fucking on a blimp on a zeppelin, and I fucking jumped off and parachuted in, and like just the battlefield way of where everything can be destroyed is fucking cool. And like, I mean, I, I think it's great. Like, I'm not really big into shooters, 
but this one is just it's it's hitting the spot, you know. It's, it looks fucking amazing. Like all my buddies, sixty four people. Yeah, all fucking, my buddies at work are playing it right now. And shit, it, it's pretty tight. 60, man. Yeah, like thirty two on thirty two, right? And actually, like I've been doing a lot of the campaign and the con or a lot of the conquests and shit with the multiplayer. But I want to do more of the campaign because I got to get a little taste of it, and it was cool, man. Just the intro was tight. The first war story is amazing, and like I don't know, I I love old war films too, like a good war movie is fucking good dude you saving know? ryan's private is like one of my favorite movies ever made dude <laughs> shut up shut up straight the fuck up i, I love believe. that movie there's some really good ones man i even like jarhead was good the thin red line is yeah. a great one that new one that's out with andrew garfield oh man. yeah that one does look really good. good oh the that one, one where he goes good. i don't need a gun yeah. I'm, I'm going in. I don't think it's quite like that. That's what he said <laughs> and he saved like no it's, it's it's not i don't need a gun he said i can't use a gun Right. Like it's against his beliefs or whatever. Right. I don't know. He's I don't probably know the story, like a Mormon or something. Maybe. But uh, maybe he's a Mormon. But probably, this one, this is. this game is cool, man, and it's fucking hard, dude. That's what I'm finding. Are it's you like, playing online a lot? Yeah, that's. <laughs> we just have not listened. This I imagine uh, next neck by next week, you'll probably have logged quite a few more hours. Yeah, and... I'm hoping so. And I'm like between this and Elder Scrolls Online, like I'm probably not going to be getting another game anytime soon. Nah. Like. Like, right. I'm really looking forward to the new Mass Effect in March. Yeah, you'll um, be getting that. But otherwise, like, I don't know, well, like, March. Dishonored 2 is coming out. That'll be cool, but I don't know if I'm really going to get it as soon as it comes out. Uh, Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, eh. you'll get that. Uh, the Last Guardian looks really eh, fucking you'll good. you'll really get but, that. Uh, you know, we'll Dude, see. Dude, you got to get that for me. Chase, I want to hear a you little... You can get it yourself. I, I don't play games. A little I bit just about play Diablo 3. Diablo. I want to hear a little bit Forever about Diablo. Alone. But, but uh, hold on real quick. Um. Okay, tell us about Diablo. Well, <laughs> I uh, started playing a witch doctor. Okay. Which I know this is real riveting shit. I have never played a witch doctor before. Really, never? I've been playing this game since 2000. But you got inspired by Elijah. 2012 like, or something. A witch doctor. Give or take. Four years. Get to the point. Is there a point to this? <laughs> So this witch doctor fellow, right? Yeah. He's, he's kind of hunkery old back, right? And he fucking hunkery. Hunk. Yeah, he's curved at the spine, you know. And really, and man, he strolls around. He got a chicken in his right hand and sword in his left, and he's casting spells, right? So you've been grinding pretty I'm, hard, dude. I told myself I was gonna get to fucking Paragon five hundred before this podcast. Done, did it, motherfucker? Did it. I hit I hit 469 about I don't know 415 ish, and uh, I was like I gotta keep going. So, anyways, I was I was doing this thing called the fire fire bat build, right? This is so and, intriguing. And these fucking bats swarm around your head, right? Like a million miles an hour, right? A swarm of bats. Like you're like Ace Ventura in the cave, you know? Oh, fucking, you don't like it, but you got to do it because you're a fucking pet detective, you right? To, right. So, um, you're a fucking pet detective. So you're going in. And, dude, doing all kinds of damage. I'm talking three, four, four and a half million cool. DPS, yeah. right? But I'm Damn. squishy. I'm squishy. Oh, squishy. You're squishy. So I'm running I fucking... I hate when that I getting squishy. So I'm running like... Squishy in the pants? Like soft, man. Like I'm going in soft. I'm going in whiskey dick. And I'm dying. You know, you're just paint brush. Boom! I'm, I'm paint just, brush. I'm just fucking. Here's a, here's a pussy. Here's my soft dick. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just painting well, it. Well, you I'm, managed to make that story this is inappropriate. Still and, uh, talking about Diablo. So like, I'm doing all kinds of damage, but I just can't stay alive. I mean, you can get these stacks, and you get stacked up, and every stack you gain times six, whatever life, and and you're good. But I couldn't get past like Paragon level like thirty. Oh darn. You're good or you're good? I'm I'm having fun because I'm doing a lot of damage. Well, that's what's important. But I'm dying. You should have heard him this morning. Me and Dave could hear him yelling from... We oh. were upstairs. We could hear him. Motherfucking God damn it. Yeah, yeah you, need a, you need to calm down. Oh, like dude. This, this witch doctor build will make you want to fucking hurt someone. It's stressful. I don't know if it will. Oh, dude. I take this very serious. That sounds like fun. Sell. I take this game very, Your very Your eyes serious. have become very beady and I'm, pointed. We got one more story very left. Sharp but looking. let me tell you. What are you going to tell us? I went to the top of the leaderboards, and I said, hey, let me let me Red Rover that build right on over. I looked at it, and I was like, hey, I have all this gear. Copied it. Guess what? Doing Paragon level 70, not even motherfucking dying. So, long story short, 
Springs is paragoning the fuck up this weekend. Hell yeah. I have no idea what just happened. Good so, for you. So that's what I got to say about Should we album. listen to this last story? Yes, let's do it. Who's this one? This is Nate Lyle. Nate. Who he commented on your post. I don't know who he is. Do you know you know who he is? Oh yeah. Okay. Shout out to Nate, man. Nate Dog. <laughs> this is uh Nate Lyle's abandoned house as interpreted by Experience. XP. XP. Oh yeah. do you I know, know that guy. You guys know XP, right? Been on tour with Macklemore last couple Ooh, years. Yeah. Not today. Not today, not today. I don't know XP today. All right, well, here it is. Here's the... Uh, the got a song is dope. Here's the abandoned house. Let's XP. I'm scared. There was this one time when I was a kid. My babysitter took me and her son and daughter to a large property she was building a house on. We found this old, overgrown house on the property and went inside... Still had dishes in the cabinets, decorations on the wall, clothes in the closets. It was all from like the 50s and early. Most of it was much earlier, though. We started to loop the fuck out of the house. I got like this old plate with the Golden Gate Bridge on it and a black hat and veil, you know, like funeral style. I like when they cuss. The other two kids took a bunch of stuff, too. It was about that time the girl was like... What if the ghosts don't like us stealing their stuff? The idea of that freaked us out. We were like, okay, let's go. As we were leaving the house, there was a strange energy in the air, and the wind kicked up, you know? I remember walking away from the house, stopping and turning around to look back at it. That's when I saw two figures in the window. They had purplish auras around them. It was a man and a woman just standing there watching us. Next thing I know, we were getting up out of the dirt, looking at each other, and just running full force back to the house. Once we got there, he asked if I had seen him too. And I told him I did. I don't even remember getting knocked down. I just remember getting up. That was still one of the craziest experiences of my life. Man. It could easily be chalked up to little kid imaginations, but I'm positive it really happened. Well, I'm a believer. Weird, man. <laughs> well, like, it was it was freaky enough and made sense with seeing the people, and then for there to be that time displacement, that's pretty weird. You just, all of a sudden, you're on the ground. You don't know how you, how you got... That's weird, man. In you're the dirt? In mud? Just a muddy old bag of bones. Dude, <laughs> Nate. Man, you, I believe you, Nate. You I really do. That you one okay? you believe? Yep. Out of all, oh, fuck yeah. Nate is not a liar. <laughs> with a Nate, with the name like Nate too. I mean, you can't, you can't lie. All right. It's like the number eight with an N in front of it. So like, all exactly. of those stories you called bullshit on, but this one you believe. Oh yeah, Nate's my dog. <laughs> Nate dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fucking, if it makes sense to me, I mean, you're in there in this other property taking stuff, and then you fucking anger this thing. The time displacement is weird it's to me. Nice, like, right? that's a... And there was two people that chased him down, right? Well, they didn't chase he him. He saw two people in the window, Whew. and then all of a sudden they were getting up and were like, had been But you know, down. the girl said that she is... brought up ghosts. And here's what here's yep. what I've noticed in my life is if you talk about that stuff, your brain starts jumping to that. See, that's what I was trying to say earlier on in the podcast. So is it your brain jumping to it or is it because your brain becomes open to the possibility that then it allows things to happen? Well, I think it's the former. Yeah, personally. I, I think it jumps to conclusion, Matt. For like sure. if you're sitting in the dark and you start telling ghost stories, I feel like. Yeah, then you're going to. You're, now you're in yeah. your head about it. I'm fucked. I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> You're too scared from all those stories. I mean, these stories, I mean, Jesus Christ. With Think about it, man. Like, Think about all the shit that came out of those people's mouths. Wolves <laughs> and fucking... And old timey trolls. Just fucking howls and fucking weird. Yeah, man, I'm into it. I love it. See, this is right up my alley of things. Yeah. Like, I love this is scary fun, shit. man. I, this has been one of the funner things I've done. Well, here's what I want. I do want to say this to the people that wrote us the stories. Nate, 
Mikey, Flynn, and Roger. He got picked out of like a hundred. First, so you're first lucky. and foremost, what we want to say is we don't want to make light of this. If it, if this is something that you're saying honestly happened to you, then by all means, go get a shrink. We, <laughs> we're, we don't want to make light of it. We don't want to say that right, we don't right. believe you. Yeah, yeah. If if this is something that you experienced, then that's your experience. Yeah, right? true, true that. And, and you, thank and like, you so much. And for if you ever it. see us in person and you need a hug, like I'm your guy. Or if you need to call and talk to me, my number is 256 But now, not a big deal. So now Chase just thinks you all are crazy. But I'm crazy. <laughs> and to Honoree and Azrael and Hetty and Experience and Aesop Rock and most importantly, Dr. Zachary McDevin. <laughs> yeah, Zach, Zach, Zach Ranger. Thank you guys so much from the bottom you, of our hearts for yeah, lending us really your voices cool. and your time. Yeah. And... Uh, this was really fun, man. Like, I really hope we get a good reaction from this. I'd love this to be, like, our new Halloween thing. So I think, know? like, some of these guys, like, have, like, music careers and stuff, right? But I think they should put that aside and all become voice actors. Well, here, I was going to say, uh, you know, I I picked people that I thought had cool voices. Right. That's the main reason why I, I hit up those people in particular. Um, and I know they're all good, smart, talented people, but I was blown away at how good they did. Oh, it's awesome. Reading man. those stories. Can you awesome. imagine they should Imagine me doing it. Hey, yo, hey, dangies. You're fucking me. Well, you could. You'd have to be able to read it. You know, like. You'd have to be able to read it first. What a first, fucking so idiot happen. I am. Dude, I just like. I'm a piece of shit, you know? Is that what happened? You heard these people reading and you were like, damn, I suck. Couldn't even believe it. The fact that these people could read these stories, and then on the other I end... Know, the first story, he goes, did he write? He had to type that up. And then <laughs> on the other end of it, these motherfuckers it. had... I have ideas in my head. Guess what? They're not coming to light because I can't type them out. You know? So, so these guys had to remember these things, and then, fuck, imagine all the commas and impossible fucking nightmare you know <laughs> hey so check out uh the newly revamped triple b podcast.com don't say dot com ever dot again com. let's stop that that's like me saying unbelievable i'm gonna stop saying unbelievable well, it's not the same thing <laughs> let's stop doing thing. it this is more of a tradition that's more of like a, a nervous tick you're that's more of a trump you're a nervous tick. um so shout out to uh spencer and elijah yeah snarls digital on the snarl Instagram. and spencer pelham um they're doing some cool stuff for us. Yeah, man. man. This uh, is, this I'm going to shout out the web fun. guy, Lauren. Lauren Sheets. He does web design. Yeah, the new website's looking cool. It's clean. Go it's to our, go to TripleBPodcast.com, and if you don't like the design, then don't hire Lauren Sheets to do your website. But, <laughs> but if you do like it, then by all means, there you go. Hit, hit up, up the kid. There's your it's man. very clean. I think it's uh, it's not fully done it's yet. It's not finished yet, but it's, it's close. I think people should go check out Zebdak.com. Zebdak.com. You know what's really cool about the old uh, Triple B.com? Triple B Podcast.com. You can play every episode just straight off the website. No buffer time. Yep. Just fucking loads. Just plays. Yeah. It's pretty clean. Boom. It's pretty easy. You got uh, some cute little mugs of our faces. Or, cuties. Or some cutie pies, you know? <laughs> Check out our um, Instagram and our, our uh, Twitter feed indeed. on the website now. Yeah, uh, I, I'm the only guy that posts. If you subscribe to podcasts, do it at a thing that has ours <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah, it has ours. Yeah, if yeah. you want to support, go check out patreon.com slash triple B podcast. Uh, we got some little levels of membership there. We're going to have links. We're going to get all that, that figured out. Yes. Um, going more, check out concussedcreations.com. Yes. And uh, once again, those people that wrote in and our storytellers, man, Dude, I can't believe Nate, it. Like, it's so awesome. Nate, Mikey, thank you, guys. Flynn, and Roger, thank you guys so much so for much. sharing. I your really want to do this again sometime. All jokes aside, what an awesome fucking thing. Experience, Henri Osborne, Azrael Howell, Hedy Leon, Aesop Rock. And these aren't like, these guys are busy. They're not playing Diablo in a basement right. with a heater. On <laughs> no, the these guys are like on the road, on tour. They're, on tour. They're doing they, things. They got things to do. And they yeah. stopped to read these stories for so us. So we appreciate um, that. They read your stories, listeners. Yeah, so. you. Roger. Aesop Roger. Rock read your story. <laughs> yeah. you, I don't Roger. know if you know this, but Aesop Rock is fucking sick as fuck. Roger. I'm just going to say it right now. I'm a fan. All right? I'm a fan of this. Henry Osborne is a, the sickest and, shit, and he sleeps on my goddamn couch. And Hetty. Holy um, shit. Hetty. I don't even know Hetty. She knows Smoke. So there you go. And she knows XP, and she's very talented, and I've always liked the work she's done with those guys, so I thought, 
I would great, love to get her voice, voice on this thing, and she nailed it. Oh, it was awesome. She Fantastic. knocked it out the park. We love it. So thank you guys for participating. See what happens when you participate on Triple B's fucking post? Everybody has a great time. Yeah, might get some cool shit happening. Any, uh, any Halloween regrets? You're fucking with the Lord over here. He Fellas, knows everyone. I'm ready to go eat some more pizza. Yeah, I'm going to go play some Diablo. I'm going to get back to my shorts. Should I? Uh, this has been a fun episode. Should I play the stories? Just for them. You guys can listen to the stories again if you want to at the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah. just have that be in the go out. And yeah. All of them. And all I think that's a good all idea. Them so if you want to, stay tuned. Listen to the story. If not, we'll Otherwise, see you next week. Thanks for listening. Later, guys. Have a good Halloween. Halloween. When I was 17, I worked at a retirement home in Manzanita, Oregon. One night, while sitting at the front desk, I got a call from the room. I didn't hear anything on the line, so I went to check on the resident. I knocked, and the woman inside invited me in. I asked if everything was all right, she said yes. She'd just been having trouble sleeping because her friend in the closet was keeping her up. I was obviously confused. She told me there was a man standing in the closet with his hands folded over his heart and that he kept making her laugh at the stories about the town they grew up in. I looked over to the open closet, but no one was there. It genuinely scared me, but once she convinced me she was fine, I shut the door and let her be for the night. I told my ex's mom about it the next day. Oh, that's the coffin man, she said. I immediately got chills. She said others had told her about him before. A tall, shirtless man with his hands folded over his heart, as though in a coffin. That they believed, knew them as a child. The woman died four days later. To this day, I don't know if she actually had called the front desk or not. I was living in Post Falls, Idaho, and I was dating this girl. We went over to a friend's house and her friend was kind of kooky. She was telling us how spirits follow her, and there's a faceless man that lives in her house. There was only five people in the house plus a little dog. The lady that owned the house, her son, my girlfriend, myself, and her two-year-old daughter. Her son got in the shower, and as my girlfriend and her friend were chatting about whatever, I was playing fetch with her dog. The dog had taken the toy behind my chair and came back in front of me like it was waiting for me to throw it. All of a sudden, the toy flew from behind my shoulder and landed near the dog. No one was behind me. Everyone was in front of me and her son in the shower. Freaked me the hell out. About 30 minutes later, we decided to leave and her daughter was walking towards the door in front of us when she stopped in the middle of the walkway like she hit an invisible wall. She fell on her butt and started crying and saying, Guy! Her mom told me that the spirit was trying to keep us from leaving. I ran out of that damn house and never returned. Scary shit. So the date is 10-31-1987. Subject is one Mikey Lambert. Subject has shown no propensity for hallucination or other neuroepisodic condition. Uh, Ms. Lambert, if you could uh, just explain to me exactly what it is you think you saw that night. When I was little, I lived in an apartment in Yakima, Washington. And our closet had our toy chest in it. And my brother and I and our neighbor were playing in my room and I crawled up inside the closet and there was a spot where you can put like stuff on top, like blankets and stuff, and you can overlook the room. Well, I was going up there 
for some reason, and I peeked over, and in the corner of my eye, I swear to God, out of my door and into the hallway, I could see a man on fire walking through my hallway. It's the only time it ever happened, but I cried my fucking eyes out. So when I was 17, I woke up in the middle of the night and was thirsty. So I went downstairs of my house and drank some milk. After I put the milk away and turned around to go back to bed, across the hall was this old-timey, troll-looking demon thing. I hurried back upstairs and thought, WTF, I did not just see that. While I was laying down in bed, I had a feeling someone was watching me, so I rolled over and opened my eyes, and that motherfucker was right in my face, just staring at me! I was so scared. I was frozen, speechless. I didn't know what to do, so I closed my eyes, telling myself it wasn't real, till I fell asleep. I'll never forget that shit. There was this one time, when I was a kid, My babysitter took me and her son and daughter to a large property she was building a house on. We found this old, overgrown house on the property and went inside. It still had dishes in the cabinets, decorations on the wall, clothes in the closets. It was all from like the 50s and early. Most of it was much earlier, though. We started to loop the fuck out of the house. I got like this old plate with the Golden Gate Bridge on it and a black hat and veil, you know, like funeral style. The other two kids took a bunch of stuff too. It was about that time the girl was like, what if the ghosts don't like us stealing their stuff? The idea of that freaked us out. We were like, okay, let's go. As we were leaving the house, There was a strange energy in the air, and the wind kicked up, you know? I remember walking away from the house, stopping and turning around to look back at it. That's when I saw two figures in the window. They had purplish auras around them, you know? It was a man and a woman just standing there watching us. Next thing I know, we were getting up out of the dirt, looking at each other, and just running full force back to the house. Once we got there, he asked if I had seen him too, and I told him I did. I don't even remember getting knocked down, I just remember getting up. That was still one of the craziest experiences of my life. It could easily be chalked up to little kid imaginations, but... I'm positive.